Grab your tinfoil hats, and it's time for Architecture Coffee Anding. Hello, this is Hollywood C, and you're listening to Architecture Coffee and Ink, a podcast dedicated to introducing concepts, detailing out designs, and tackling the architecture you might not realize the meaning behind. I'm your hostess, and I'm here today to start introducing you to the designs that make you wonder why. So I ask you to brew your coffee, grab your sketchbook and pen, and let's begin. So, what a weird week. I gave you a bonus episode on a Tuesday as normal, and a normal episode as a weekend bonus. And along with that, I provide another bonus. If you listen to the bonus episode first, then you know that this is a completely unrelated unrelated episode. If you didn't, surprise! This is going to be about conspiracies and architecture, and I am going do all the websites with the funky fonts and the questionable music choices. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) There are actually several completely well-documented, believed conspiracies about architecture and some designs that have been around for years. So with all that in mind, of course, I am going to be focusing on one that started to gain traction on Reddit. This one, this one is a doozy. I am going to be talking about the Tartarian, Tartarian Empire. This is actually my second time recording this episode because I made the mistake of thinking I was safe from the cat and did not consider the fact that the bunny is in the room with me. So once she was done throwing her bowl around, I had to re-record and I think I have said Tartar in at least 30 different ways in both episode recordings. So I actually first heard of this through a complete mistake. I was actually researching the Singer building for an actual class several years ago. And most of you know the Singer building as it was very um, well known for both its style as well as how it was constructed, but you also know that it was eventually removed. And when I was trying to create this presentation, I was trying to focus on, you know, historical facts and diving into the research just a little deeper and from a wide variety of sources. Now, I can't remember at the moment exactly why it was. It was either to help tutor someone or something like that. But when I was researching, I decided to take just a quick break to look at images and accidentally stumbled across this topic. So to be completely and utterly transparent, I completely forgot about this and was prompted to pull all of this back up after someone emailed me the article written by Zach Mortis for Bloomsburg and was asked to do an episode on it. However, after thinking about it, there is a reason that I want to do this episode as well and explain just why this particular case study is a good case study on information. Now, the majority of my fellows in academia have probably never heard of this theory, much less the Tartarian Empire. And that is honestly perfect. Please don't Google it yet. Don't put me on pause while you do a quick search. Listen to the episode before you start reaching for your laptops. 
Conspiracy theories are a topic that are really hard to undergo, especially when you are trying to establish yourself with credibility as a serious designer or even a professional. While this episode is fun, I think that they are relevant to understand from an academic standpoint, as you need to be aware of the biases you may come across. And more importantly, you have to be aware of what information is being promoted. You know, as architects, we normally come across biases or beliefs more about color theories or that was their ex-husband's favorite color so they can't have it in their house. Not quite the same as what we're going to be talking today. But either way, please enjoy today's story. So according to various sources, which covered everything from YouTube to Reddit to Bloomsburg to AccuWeather, there was apparently a super secret country that has been wiped away from history and removed from all the books due to a mudslide killing the entire population and burying the entire country all as recent as the last 100 years ago or less this theory is credited on wikipedia as starting in russia and the two individuals credited with it are antovi Fominko's New Chronology and Nikolas Levy-Dolf. Within within this theory, the idea is that there's a large part of Asia, particularly the majority of Russia, China, and some of India. And it was all originally a country called the Grand Tatari or the Grand Tataria. These people slash country is and are believed to be so advanced that they created a lot of the buildings and features that carry over as archetypes and are responsible for several buildings that are torn down, such as the Singer building, which I was researching. And it is due to the quote, universal government decision to wipe all mentions of this country that the buildings and the architecture was so completely removed and in many cases destroyed. Now, I put universal government in parentheses because while I was able to find a couple of key players mentioned, they really didn't seem to mention a single entity that was responsible for the wipe. It seemed to be all of them. It was pretty hard to get a clear picture on that one, and it kind of seemed to vary person to person who they felt was responsible and why. And in some cases, it wasn't even just a mudslide. There was disease and targeted genocide and other things being drug into this category as being responsible for the reason that the country no longer exists. But referring to the architecture, there's two distinctive features that pop out at a very quick glance for the architecture included. One, it is the building is old and it's buried. And two, there is a dome. So if you look online, a lot of the building styles are just modern and they kind of follow in that postmodern trend. Some of them are like the Singer building. Some of them are actually more historic. Um, It just really varies building to building. And the two distinguishing features that they always seem to reference in the only only the like 200 posts that I saw was most of them referred to the dome as the main feature that they kept coming back to. Also, history is folded and doesn't exist before 800 AD. But since the publications of Flamenco's books, his books have 
have been officially rejected and declared pseudoscience by the main scientific community. Within the primary articles linked to the Reddit post and a series of follow-up articles and reporting, the three major sources I was able to find to support this theory were the Encyclopedia Britannica, Volume 3 in particular, a declassified CIA document, and a Wikipedia article where, ironically, it was claimed to be false and dubbed a conspiracy in the article, but the article was being used to support theory. This is actually the same one I mentioned earlier. Most of the time, it used the first sentence of the article without any inclusion of that misquote and disagreement that I just mentioned. My first issues with researching this topic is that it's pretty hard to draw a conclusive single narrative. A lot of the listed sources I found attached to articles link-wise just took me to the main homepage of the database listed. Not an exact article. Searching the database in turn often failed to find the exact articles listed by name. Now, to be fair, that could genuinely be due to the recent publicity or the ages of the articles. You really never know. The second issue was that if you chase the sources long enough, they would circle back around or run into articles where no citation was needed. So I didn't include any of those, but I did include several blogs or opinion-based articles in my sources to be completely fair that argued both for and against the theory. So the reason that this has recently popped up in modern history, or I guess a better way would to be to say it would be current history is that a document was declassified by the CIA. And while the declassification happened in 98, the document itself was dated all the way back to 1957. Within the document, a single paragraph seems to be posted on most of those sites over and over again. And it contains the following phrase that's highlighted. Quote, a, direct, a directive ordering the party that the Tartar Provincials Committee to proceed to a scientific revision of the history of Tartaria to liquidate serious shortcomings and mistakes of a nationalistic character committed by the individual writers and historians in dealing with the Tartar community. In other words, Tartar history was to be rewritten. Let us be frank was to be falsified in order to eliminate references to the great Russian aggressions and to hide the facts of the real course of the Tartar and Russian relations." End quote. So I did finally find the source that this single clip comes from. And admittedly, it was very, very hard to find. And the very, very first line of the document refers to the names exactly what group of people it's referring to as the Tartars. It says the Tartars of Volga and Prima, Turks and Trans Caucasia. While the paragraph that keeps getting reposted is actually on page 10 of a report talking about the communist suppression of the Muslim minority after and during the 40 years of the establishment of the um, communist government. The names being referenced in particular are referring to people who are located around the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, a much smaller region than is being proposed by the original theory. However, in the theory's favor is that there are several maps that were labeled as variations of Tartaria. However, in the theory's favor is that there are several maps that were labeled as variations of Tartaria in the region that they're proposing. 
but in contrast, the West, when first exploring, was prone to getting a wee bit trigger happy with labeling and dubbing things underneath the title pretty quickly. A good example is Columbus coming to America and it taking Vespucci to realize he wasn't in India. So thus far, I was pretty 50-50 on it. Hard to believe that the massive destruction happened not too long ago and we don't know it. But I do believe that people could be targeted and ostracized from society and maps. The maps do exist. And I could even believe the use of the word Tartar as a general phrase for a group. And several of the sources, including images of languages of the scripts that they're claiming were used by them. Some are in vertical, some are not. Some are clear crosses over to Mongol and Mongolian. And some share similarities with Arabic. So I can see a lot of similarities in different aspects. But maybe too many similarities. But then we get to the giants. Now, they aren't referring to giganticism, which is a disease. For many, they believe that these people were actually Jack and the Beanstalk size. For those who don't know the story, it's a fable where a child outwits a giant, a creature over 15 feet tall, which is very, very different. One of the more common causes of giganticism is often tumors or overexpression of IGFI hormone or hormones in general. Um, sometimes it's growth, growth hormones. Um, it's kind of I'm repeating basically the same word multiple different ways there. It's just different ways of the pituitary gland being affected a lot of time by the growth plate. It just kind of depends upon the variation. It is extremely more complicated than what I just said, and I kind of simplified it um, a lot, but it will oftentimes cause individuals to have shorter life expectancies and a bunch of health-related issues throughout their life. However, according to my population's genetic professor I took way back, the average heights of humans has overall mellowed out, and height is often influenced by nutrition as well as genetics. So I suppose to a shorter population genetically, giants could be a relative term. There are also issues with the appropriation of ideas from other cultures by believers and trolls alike, as well as some photoshops just to get, quote, people to think about the possibility. Now, I do have a problem with that. I don't believe that you should appropriate another culture in the quest of getting someone to believe your theory. I think that the article by Mortis stated it best when he said, at its core, the theory reflects a fear of how quickly things change. As I look at today's cityscapes, Tartaria believers see an eerie and alienating place filled with abstract monoliths that emerged out of nowhere in a brief period of time. Another article also pulled this quote out as well which I linked in the notes. But what I think is most important to academia is the knowledge and information and how it was treated. First, a lot of the articles I ended up ignoring because they didn't consider a full source or took the topic wildly out of context. Even the ones I mentioned did it a lot of the time. Second, trust was a huge playing factor in this topic. When people trusted the source, it didn't matter how many or few sources were included. They were more willing to trust and go with the source that they knew and were familiar with than risk untrustworthy resources. Three, the access of information played a huge role. Some of the ideas and the concepts took root because no information was available. 
It was either withheld or didn't exist on a public level, so people filled in. Four, many of the articles condemned the major supporters for not having a background or training in architecture, but the way that they addressed them wouldn't exactly encourage anyone to reach out and ask questions and get information. Gatekeeping didn't help, and it clearly made the situation a lot worse. Many of the supporters felt that they had a passion and a drive to understand architecture, but lacked a place to do it, much less a conversation to have it in. And this created a feedback loop with the first few points, and the idea just was kind of born and fed off of itself. So just remember, check your facts, check your sources, and more importantly, check me. Thank you once again for tuning in. And once again, a big thank you to all my listeners and a quick call to action. Please rate and review, share with your friends, your neighbors, and your family, your professor, whomever you think needs some architecture in their life. We again have a Facebook page and private group, both of which are under the same name, Architecture Coffee and Ink. The answer to the question, who the host is, is Hollywood, just like the city. And the second question is just your opinion, and I might just use it as a recommendation for a show with this little shout out. If you want to either be featured or have a case study suggestion, You can find me at Architecture Coffee and Ink. The website is architectureinc.design.blog. And as always, Insta and email is Architecture Coffee and Ink, all spelled out. Please check out the other episode coming out with this one. Bonus Underwater Designs, Part 2. And as always, may your coffee mugs be full and your ink wells never run dry.